am from in New England, we are awash in memorials, statues and plaques in park after park, commemorating events and battles and those who died in wars, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, the World Wars. Churches, too, are often covered, all the walls in plaques, memorials to families, to shipwrecks, to different events. One church in Newport has a plaque where George Washington sat Interestingly enough, there's another plaque in the same pew where they had Queen Elizabeth sit, kind of a wry New Englander's joke, I guess, at the UK's expense. These memorials, of course, are meant to lead one to remember past events and people, moments from long ago. Tonight, we gather here, beckoned by the Lord Jesus, who asked us to do this in remembrance of him. But what we do here tonight, and every time we gather for the Eucharist, is not a mere passive recollection of a past event. We gather tonight at the start of the sacred triduum, these days when we remember and celebrate and make real again Christ's suffering and death and resurrection, those incredible events which demonstrate so definitively God's enduring love for us and which changed history and the future forever. We gather at the command of the Lord Jesus who asked us that we do this in remembrance of him not as some reenactment but so that we might remain in his presence and follow in his footsteps. On this night, so long ago, Jesus gathered with his closest friends to celebrate the Passover meal, just as the Jewish people had done for centuries, remembering how God freed them from slavery by the sign of the Lamb's blood on the door and nourished them for the journey with unleavened bread. During this Last Supper with his disciples, Jesus wanted to explain to them the meaning of the events that would follow in the ensuing days, how the wine they shared would become his blood and forever be the mark of their salvation, how the bread they shared would become his body and food for their journey to eternal life, how his sacrifice on the cross would become the everlasting sign of God's unconditional love for them and destroy death forever. The bread of the Eucharist is not like the bread we eat at home. It is the risen Christ, truly present among us, who gave his flesh for the life of the world so that you and I might live forever. In Egypt, the blood of the Paschal Lamb on the doorposts and lintels of homes signified that inside lived people whose lives God had promised to save. Jesus' blood does not mark the doorposts of our homes. We drink it under the sign of wine, the blood of the vine. It becomes our Passover from death to new life, from slavery to sin, to freedom. That night, gathered one last time with his disciples, Jesus also gave them an example to follow, another way they would experience his abiding presence. Getting up from the table, the Lord of all creation, the Word made flesh, got down on his hands and knees to wash their dirty feet. It's no wonder they protested. This was the Messiah on the ground before them in a gesture of humility and servanthood. But to Jesus, it summed up all he had taught them about God and about discipleship. Just as he would be lifted up on the cross the next day, 
So now he bowed before them to show them what it had all meant. In the midst of ignorance and misunderstanding and betrayal, Jesus indicates his love for his own by washing their feet. He wanted to give them and us a lasting image of himself and of God the Father. Not a God who looks down from on high, sitting in judgment, but a God who looks up in love at his people. A God who ate with sinners, who touched the unclean and healed them. A God who grieved while others wept. A God who forgives all the wrong we do and asks us to have that same compassion, that same mercy for each other. A God who washes feet and who gave his life on the cross so that we would be freed from death. This is what we make truly present once again and celebrate tonight and during these next three days. That God so loved the world that he sent his only son and promised to remain with us always so that we might have life in its fullness the unspeakable suffering he endured during his passion and death was to show us how much we are loved. A gift of self so profound, our only response is to try as best we can to give ourselves away in love to one another. The Lord comes to us tonight as he does every time we celebrate the Eucharist and make real again his saving death and resurrection. And he says to each one of us personally, I love you. I am with you. I give my life for you, my body and my blood, so that you can share my life with others. We live that life as disciples on a journey nourished by the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, with a towel and a basin as our tools, knowing that Jesus is always with us and that if we follow his example, we will share in his resurrection.